it pays off. You know, you make friends. Shrooms are the local bartenders of the internet. Yeah. <laughs> this is Going Live. I'm Mike Washburn. As always, be sure to visit me when I go live myself on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Mr. Washburn. We can chat about this interview or any other and who you might want to hear from on the podcast next. That's twitch.tv slash Mr. Washburn. All the links for how to reach me are in the show notes. This week in the first episode of Going Live, we're talking to Ludi. When I started to get seriously involved in streaming, I wanted to make connections, in particular in the Minecraft streaming world. For those of you listening who don't know me, I host a few other podcasts, one of them being the official Minecraft Education Edition podcast, and I'm a pretty serious Minecraft player. I travel all over the world helping teachers use Minecraft in their classrooms even. One of the first people I really made a connection with was Ludi. I find him genuine and endearing. He's an easy dude to like. Maybe that's why he's a Twitch partner and a very widely watched and followed Minecraft streamer. I'm so excited to have him on as my first guest when we come back, my conversation with Ludi. All right, welcome back to the podcast, everyone. I am pumped to be here with Ludi. He's a partner Twitch streamer and a major Pokemon fanatic. I'm thrilled to have him on and welcome to the podcast, Ludi. Hey, what's up? So happy. This is the first podcast. I'm psyched to have you on it and we're getting started with a good one. It's going to be great. Oh, yeah. Well, this is my first podcast as well. So I mean, I'm super stoked. And yeah, it's going to be great. So we spent a solid hour <laughs> getting some technical glitches resolved before we could chat. And it made me laugh because you were determined to get it right and solve the problem yeah. and trying different sources and different devices and all of that stuff. And, and man, it reminded me that one of the reasons I got into streaming is the... You know, the same reason I'm into podcasts and that's that, you know, I tell people all the time with podcasts and I think the same goes for streaming, that streaming is easy. Podcasting is easy. Like you can just turn on a mic or turn on a camera and turn on your PC or PS4 or whatever the hell you want to use and, and mm -hmm. go. But doing these very well is very hard. Oh, yeah. Do you love to geek out on the tough stuff, the technical stuff of streaming kind of like I do? <laughs> To an extent, I love researching new equipment and things and, and, and setting it up for the first time. But when it gives me malfunctions and it's not working the way that it's meant to work, I get really like yeah. pissed off. I get like too pissed off. <laughs> do you get determined though to fix it? I do. I won't quit. Well, I just saw a bit of it, so. So if it's if it's not working, I will I will stay up forty eight hours to get this thing working. It's just how I am, man. And, and how big's your wish list? Like, do you have like a giant wish list of things you want to buy and like the next upgrade and stuff yeah. like that? Kind of like I, I think I do. It's not massive. Like I, I'm definitely a one step at a time kind of guy mentally when it comes to upgrades. Like nice. I'm actually looking to get rid of some equipment instead of upgrade mm -hmm. it. Like I've got a, a really nice Yamaha MG 12 XU um, mixer mm -hmm. and it's fantastic. It's got, you know, all the different effects and it's got um, like 12. I mean, I think it's 12 inputs and um, you can isolate, you know, sources. So I use it to isolate my microphone so I can talk in discord while I'm also streaming and gaming. Sure. Yeah, but I want to get rid of it. It's a huge eyesore. It's a big thing on my desk, and I'm actually looking to kind of downgrade really to an Elgato microphone because it's USB, and I don't need a mixer, and it does a lot of other cool things. Um, so my next downgrade is actually going to be a <laughs> Elgato mic. Right now, I'm using the Audio Technica 2035. It's a great microphone, but it's just yeah. it's I don't know. It's just too. 
at the moment for me, it's a little, it's just a little bit too much, and I'm kind of cramped for space. I was gonna say you need some desk real estate for more Pokemon cards and stuff. Exactly. I've right? got I've, elite trainer boxes all over the place. Yeah, behind me I have elite trainer boxes and Pokeballs, and I just built this shelf yesterday, and this was all on the floor <laughs> previously. Right. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm running out of space here, so I need more space for Pokemon cards. <laughs> I'm gonna sacrifice some audio quality for it. <laughs> that's awesome so i feel like content creation though is one of those fields where people are always learning mm -hmm. um and and again as a as an educator by trade it's probably why i was drawn to to streaming as well since i do a lot of speaking and presenting um i tend to listen to conference speakers and keynotes and speeches and I'm assessing their style and like their delivery and how they like go about their work um, as much as I'm assessing kind of their content and what they're actually saying. And right. I'm wondering if you're doing a little bit of the same, where do you get your inspiration from when you're like, are you watching different streamers and taking notes? Uh, I feel like most of the things that I do are it's like, like it's a, sudden inspiration kind of thing not necessarily uh i watch somebody do this and i want to do it too kind of a thing um i try to be as innovative as possible with the way that i present myself the way that i present my stream i try to have you know certain things about my stream that no other streamers have like like mm. recently on twitch there's been the big phenomenon of opening pokemon cards and yeah like i kind of i kind of started that in our little circle with the whole yeah, opening packs for tips and stuff like that was originally my idea and that took off like a wildfire yeah as for inspiration i really don't get much from twitch streams really um a lot of like the technical stuff that you see I look at it and say, that looks like too much effort, hmm. <laughs> you know, a lot of the, you know, sound effects and, and, you know, really customizing your stream deck and, and things like that is just, it's too much in the moment. Like I just want to hit live and not have to hit any buttons and I just want to play my game and, sure. you know, that's, that's kind of how I am. But when it comes to inspiration, I definitely get a lot from YouTube, um, watching, yeah. watching YouTube videos and, how can I incorporate some of the magic of YouTube into my Twitch stream? And so I'm, I'm kind of looking at a different source for inspiration rather than looking at other Twitch streamers and just copycatting them, you know? That's interesting. Yeah, my podcasting experience has absolutely informed how I stream. I'm sure. And yeah. it's where I've gotten most of my inspiration for like interviews and conversational style and stuff like mm -hmm. that. That's that's really interesting. I'm super excited to eventually chat with like non gaming streamers, right? Because there are there are people who don't stream games at all, which is which is cool. Like cooking streams are are something I'm I don't really watch a lot of it, but I'm fascinated by the idea, um, especially successful ones. But I think it's fairly safe to say that most streamers are gamers at least right now in the way that the demographics are on twitch definitely yeah i'd say so too so i'd love to know what you do off stream so do you relax and and play games to wind down you know it's funny i kind of do a lot of minecraft for work like we both play minecraft as a job yeah and, and, you know different right i don't stream it i i teach teachers how to use minecraft for a living that's that's one of the things that i do and and host the minecraft podcast but when your work is also a game you know what do you do for fun and i'm curious you know if what other people do for fun is the work what do you do do you still play minecraft off stream I play other games off stream. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm I'm I've been streaming Minecraft since 2015. Yeah. And I've I've logged dude 8,000 hours or something close to that into Minecraft. Yeah. And uh it's just like I love it and when I when I stream it I enjoy myself. Like I really don't have anything bad to say about the game and I'm not like burnt out on it or anything like that, but I just know that if I want to experience any other games, it has to be off stream. 
you know, like I have to make time for it off stream. So lately I've been digging deep into Elder Scrolls online. I really right. love the Elder Scrolls lore. You know, I was playing Skyrim um, and then started playing ESO and maxed a character on ESO. And that's what's kind of been what I've been doing lately. So do you feel like you can't play another game on stream as much as you play Minecraft? Like you, Minecraft is clearly your main game. Do you, yeah. feel, do you feel pressure to play Minecraft? Definitely. Yeah, I definitely feel pressure to play Minecraft. Because, um, I mean, I, th I think about it like myself. If I have a favorite streamer, mm -hmm. you know, and they're streaming the game that I'm into, that I'm interested in watching... You know, I'm I'm more likely to tune in. But if my favorite streamer is playing a game that I'm don't know too much about, or maybe I don't enjoy the game. Like for example, I don't like MOBAs. And if I see a streamer of mine playing League of Legends, I might pop in and say hi. But you're gonna switch the channel. But I'm not gonna know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna know what's going on, or maybe I just don't enjoy the the type of game it is. And so it's just a lot you know, less enjoyable for me. And so I know that if I stream something other than Minecraft, other people are going to have the same situation. Like, oh, I don't know what Elder Scrolls Online is, you know, or so they're not going to tune in. And and, it, and it, it's true. Although I do stream other games, like I, I'm starting a thing called TES Tuesday and TES Thursday, um, where I stream the Elder Scrolls. So just anything under that category, Elder right. Scrolls Online, Skyrim, Morrowind, Oblivion, any of those. And so I have been doing non-Minecraft related content. But I will say one of the things that I got to do and I've been doing on my stream that's been kind of a break from the Minecraft content that's actually been very successful is opening Pokemon cards. Right. It it acts as a bit of a diversion from kind of the, for lack of better words, monotony of playing the same game, you know, every yeah. day for seven, eight hours at a time, right? Yeah. And the chat, your chat seems to love it. Like, I mean, I'm yeah. in I'm in your stream a lot and watching and 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 I mean it's entertaining. I don't know. Explain to me how opening a pack of cards got interesting and the fact that they're paying you <laughs> to open the card that you already bought and own. This dynamic from a business perspective is brilliant. I don't fully understand the, I, I find myself entertained and I'm still yeah. trying to wrap my head around why. I'd have to say from, from a viewer's perspective, maybe it's the, you know, you tip five bucks. I open a pack and pull a $300 card. We're happy for you, yeah. I gave that streamer $300 when in reality you only fronted five. Sure. You know? Um, and it's just that gamble, you know? I mean, I, I don't care who you are. Everybody loves to gamble. It, it doesn't have to be in the slots, but it can be Overwatch loot boxes. And it can be, you know, just taking a chance on on certain things in your life. And it when it pays off, it's that satisfaction, that dopamine yeah, yeah, that yeah. goes through your body, you know? And and so it just kind of capitalizes on that dopamine from opening cards. Now, from my perspective, dude, I just love everything about it. It's nostalgia for me, too. And I think nostalgia is a big factor as well for a lot of people. Because mm -hmm. Pokemon, it's just at that right time where most of my viewers were introduced to it as, as a kid, grew up with it. You know, it's something that brings them back, makes them feel younger. And that's how it is for me. Like, just the... Like the smell of the cards even just brings me back to when I was 12. You know, it's just, yeah. that's how it is. But. That, that's awesome. So, I mean, pulling a $300 card, I mean, that's a big deal. Yeah. Right. And you are a full time streamer and you're also investing tons of money at the front end of this mm -hmm. buying Pokemon cards. There's a business equation to this as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, there is. There is. I imagine that you're like crunching the numbers and thinking about how it all, you know, plays out. You got to sell cards. You, this is this is a way you earn income. Yeah, definitely. A lot of it you've got to you can go overboard. And I and and I, I'm not going to say that I'm perfect with mm. my financial <laughs> decisions, you know, because, um, <clears throat> you know, people will be hyped. They'll buy into, the, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll tip and 
and make me open these packs. And when I start getting low on packs, I start like panicking, like, oh, I got to get more packs so I don't run out on stream. And then on top of that, I find deals in stores and things like that. And I'm like, oh, I can't pass up on this opportunity because Hidden Fates is in GameStop right now. When's it going to be in like this might never happen again. I got to grab as many as I can. And so there is a bit of impulse buying. And I would definitely say that I've probably bought too many sealed packs and I should have invested more in grading the cards and getting them back so I can list them on eBay and make my like the actual because I mean, you pull a three hundred dollar card. It's not really worth three hundred dollars until you grade it, have it back, list it on eBay and get the and get the sale. You know, right. like I'm sitting on a, a, you know, Charizard or whatever, but you can't hand a Charizard to your landlord and, you know, pay rent with Doesn't, it. Charizard don't pay the bills. <laughs> yeah, not until you sell them. Right. So, yeah, there there is a lot of uh, number crunching for sure. And I'm in a good position. I'm probably sitting on, you know, on, on plenty worth of worth of value in cards. And I have 189 cards that I got back from CGC that are already graded that are just waiting to get listed on eBay. Wild. Yeah, 189. It's it's quite it's quite a few. That's a but you know what it is though? It's more than anything, it is just it's something that I found that I just absolutely love doing. Yeah. You know, just that that excitement of opening the packs that uh, then you get that excitement again of opening up the shipments from the grading company to see what grades you got. Sure. And then you get that uh, that another excitement of actually when you sell the card. Mm-hmm. And 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 I just yeah, but I I will admit most of it has been like just gut feelings and impulse buying. So I'm just, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> that's interesting. That's that's most of it. Going Live is brought to you by Nodecraft. Do you love multiplayer servers? Ever thought about hosting your own? If you have, check out Nodecraft. I've been using Nodecraft for my community server and for servers of pop-up projects I'm working on. And I'll be honest, I've never experienced a smoother, more reliable service than theirs. If you use my special URL, you'll get 30% off your Nodecraft subscription. Just go to nodecraft.com slash r slash Mr. Washburn and get 30% off your next multiplayer adventure. Again, that URL is nodecraft.com slash r slash Mr. Washburn. So we have a someone that I think we probably both mutually admire, or at the very least watch. Um, um, and I wanted to chat about Stingin, who is another another streamer, and because this is related, mm-hmm. um, Stingin and his his partner, uh, also a streamer, one board chicky, one board chicky, uh, have both come down with COVID, and not just like a mild case, mm-hmm. but a a dangerous, serious case, especially chicky, who is you know, in mm-hmm. the hospital and, and it's scary. So, and I actually want to point out that if you're listening to this in the first few weeks in the show notes is a GoFundMe link to a page. Cause we're going to talk about why they would need that. Um, they're both streamers. If they aren't streaming, they aren't making money. Mm-hmm. And um, not just, you know, Charizards don't pay bills and, streaming if you're not doing it you're not earning an income and being a full-time streamer and you are a full-time streamer there's the danger of of that so i've been thinking about the finances of being a full-time streamer and you know my my heart goes out to to those two i i donated to their gofundme but i'm wondering if you've been thinking a little bit about that yourself about like i think it's put into context for a, a few people i've been watching on twitter you know, realize that this is a pretty scary game, you know, when you can't do your job, Mm -hmm. um, you know, as an entertainer and content creator, you have no way of earning income. Personally, I feel like money is the last thing on their minds. No, of course. At the moment, I think. Yeah, no, for them right now, they need to kind of like get through it. Yeah. You know, you can't put a dollar amount on on a life. No. And especially chicky right now like doesn't look good um no it's awful and 
I'm sure it's say that you know if if they both beat it, they both get back home. They they are going to have a very high dollar amount um, of hospital bills. You know, we live in the good old U.S. of A. with the amazingly expensive healthcare system. Top um, notch, friend. Top notch. Yes, top notch. They'll take your arm and your leg, and then you'll pay an arm and a leg is kind of how right. it is out here. But um, yeah, it'll be tough, and 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 unfortunately, with the with the streaming career, time off is it's it's negative income. Yeah, it's it's it because it, it, with most jobs, you are you know you work nine to five, you get you know vacation, you know paid holiday, um, salary. Yeah, salary, that kind of thing, and and you take some time off, and you don't pay anything for it. Like you, you might get a little bit behind on your work, but that's the, about the extent of it. Mm-hmm. With streaming, you know, you take time off, and then you're spending money as compared to making money. Mm-hmm. You know, like you're say say you you know go on a vacation. Well, you just drop two thousand dollars to go, you know spend a weekend in a cabin and that really gets to you. And as a streamer, it's really tough to try and convince yourself to take time off because you know, Hey, if I stream tonight, I could make some money. You know, if I stream tonight, you know, I'll be increasing my income instead of spending my savings. And, and, um, you know, with, with Sting and Chicky right now, you know, they are, yeah, absolutely not making any money at all whatsoever. And they're going to have a very stressful financial, situation even at when they get back you know yeah so we've put that gofundme link in the show notes so that you can check it out but i'm curious then you know you have to feel pressure to stream Mm -hmm. you know or or you don't or you don't pay the bills you don't pay the rent Mm -hmm. um yeah, it's it's got a it's got a way on um, full time streamers, especially, you know, if your name's not Summit or Pokimane or mm-hmm. or, you know, Lupo. Soda right? poppin. Soda yeah. poppin. Right. Um, you know, if your name's not those folks, you take a week off and you lose followers. Mm-hmm. There's a, an, an economics term called opportunity cost. This is the value of the thing you don't do. And so when you say, you know, I spent two thousand dollars to go away for a weekend. Well, the value of the thing I'm not doing, which is streaming, if you make, let's say, $300 a stream, you know, the opportunity cost of you going away for a week is like $1,500. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, how often are you thinking about, you know, taking a night off and then realizing that, you know, food's got to still come on the table? It's very often. And um, mm-hmm. I see, I've always been a big believer of momentum. Yeah, okay. And, and cause I mean, you can, you can be streaming every single day and just cranking out six hour streams, seven days a week, you're growing, your numbers are going up, your average view counts going up, you know, people are tuning in, they're enjoying your content. And then, you know, you're building up that momentum and then you take three days off. Well, you get back all of a sudden your numbers are halved. All of a sudden, half the people that used to watch you that were that were interested and engaged in your whatever playthrough you were doing, they're not interested anymore because they went to go watch their favorite streamer. Their favorite streamer was offline. Well, what am I going to watch right now? You know, like so they go tune into somebody else and they'll get invested in their playthrough. Mm -hmm. And three days later, they're so invested in this other playthrough, they don't come back. You know, and th- they might come back eventually. You know, you can always build that momentum back up, but streaming absolutely has momentum. And if you take time off, you lose that momentum. And you and and you kind of have to be smart about it. I'm not saying you can't take time off. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but like take it off instead of three day, like a three day chunk or two day chunk. Take off, you know, um, Tuesday and Thursday. You know, and so you miss you miss Tuesday, then you stream Wednesday, you miss Thursday, you stream Friday, um, and like as 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 just a like a solely a streamer's perspective, that's how I kind of approached it, and it's worked for me. Um, 
But I'm not going to lie. There's also burnout. Burnout is very, very yeah. common with streaming. And there have been times that I've completely burnt out and hit a, a spell of depression and taken too many days off. And, um, you know, your, your channel really suffers mm -hmm. from, from something like that. And, uh, I mean, going back to Pokemon cards, that's helped me kind of spread my eggs in more than one mm. basket. So I'm not so worried about if I take tonight off, you know, I'm not going to have as many viewers the next day. Um, you know, if I take tonight off, I'm not going to have, you know, that income from that stream. I'm not so, I'm not as worried about that as I was before because I've got multiple sources of income. Cause I might take the night off. Yeah. Okay. I didn't make 200 bucks on stream or however much it would be on stream, but I did sell a hundred dollars worth of cards on eBay. Yeah. You know, so you kind of have that, you know, that income, that secondary income to supplement your streaming and help you make more healthy decisions when it comes to the grind. And switching gears, when you do take a couple of days off and you do come back and it must be great that, you know, your folks, your people, right? Your core crowd are probably always there, always mm -hmm. kind of cheering you on. Tell us a little bit about your chat, about the the group of supporters that you you feel like you have and what you have going on as far as building a community. Because I always find, you know, that is absolutely fascinating. And you're a pretty positive guy on stream. And, and it's a lot of fun to watch as someone that watches you fairly often. You know, it's a, it's a hell of a place to be. And you, and you really do feel like you got a great community going on. Building a community is hard. Yeah. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of off stream effort. It's a lot of time. But honestly, it's just making friends. It's you know, being interested in the person behind the screen and, you know, seeing them it, it kind of a, a step beyond a viewer, mm -hmm. you know, like things like Discord have definitely made that a lot easier to do, mm -hmm. um, you know, than before. And when I first started streaming, you know, Discord wasn't a thing and it was it was a little bit tough to keep in touch with your viewers aside from Twitch whispers and Twitter messages. Um, but I definitely have a, a pretty strong core community that uh, like of friends, like literally of friends that, that they come in and, you know, we, we mess with each other and we, you know, make fun of each other a little bit and, you know, inside jokes and all that stuff. It's a lot of fun to make friends like that and may, and have people that you can shoot the shit with when you're on, when you're on stream, yeah. because if it's just nothing but like, I'm the streamer, here's my game play. You're watching me tip me. Yeah, give me blah, your blah, and that's all it is. <laughs> exactly. If that's all it is, then nobody's going to want to come back. You know, you want to, if someone pops in the chat, you want to say, Oh, you know, what do you do? Um, you know, where do you live? How are you? You know, what, what are you going through? You know, and when they when they tell you something like, hey, this happened, you know, instead of just reading it out loud and then dismissing it and going back to what you were doing, like actually think about it and think like, you know, how did that make them feel? What are they currently going through right now? You know, if, if I were in their shoes, how would I want them to have me respond, you know, and, and, and think about it kind of that way and be a little bit more invested in them rather than whatever you're doing on stream. And it pays off. You know, you make friends. Streamers are the local bartenders of the internet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a bartender who's actually engaged in your story is going to get a bigger tip. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a fact, yeah. That's awesome. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, I, I really enjoy it. You know, like you're somebody that I've got to know pretty well from, you know, not just stream, but like we talk in, you know, Twitter DMs and, and uh you know, we talk about things aside from streaming. We talk about Pokemon cards. We talk about, you know, getting me on a podcast. And it's mm -hmm. it's all just it's all about making friends and 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 making connections and and you know helping each other out with whatever we're trying to accomplish. Totally. So 
one of the other things that I noticed that's very common about all content creators is that they're always making plans. Mm -hmm. Streamers, content creators have always got things that they're working on, things up their sleeves, ideas they have, goals um, that they want to achieve, whether it's a year from now or five years from now. So I'm curious, Ludi, where where do you see your stream in a year? Um, what do you what do you feel like your kind of your goals are? I mean, other than trying to just get out of 2020 alive, like all of us, <laughs> what are your thoughts on 2021 as far as you and your work and your business and, and streaming? That's a big question. I've got some pretty lofty goals. I'll always tell somebody who wants to be a streamer that they need to look broader than that. They need to look beyond streaming because very, very rarely does anybody go live a hundred times and become big. They have to use every platform that they have access to, to grow their brand and, Mm -hmm. and, and grow their community in one year i plan to have you know a youtube community of at least 10,000 subs that can help supplement my average view count when i do go live i actually see myself streaming probably 4 days a week as compared to you know the 6 or 7 days a week that i'm doing now and i'm going to be you know spreading my content throughout other platforms mostly um youtube instagram and twitch Now, I've always seen YouTube as the best platform to grow a community, grow people that are interested in in you and the niche that you fill, um, because YouTube just has the much better algorithm to help people find you. Twitch, it's a lot. The only algorithm Twitch has is I'm going to click on the game I want to watch and see who has the highest view count. Like that's all Twitch can offer. Discoverability is terrible on Twitch. It, yeah, discoverability is almost non-existent on Twitch. And as somebody who tried to do solely Twitch for five years, um, it's just stagnant. It's a plateau. You'll, you'll, you know, the only real way to grow solely on Twitch is networking and raids, but. I I just I really feel like it's almost unfair to your fellow streamers to enter into their chat room with the mentality of I'm here to network. You know, Um, like there's definitely a right way to go about it, and it definitely like it's it's important. Networking is very important. Getting to know your fellow streamers and and all that stuff. but if you're there just to talk about yourself, then, um, you know, it's just, it's unfair to them. Yeah. Because they're sitting there, they're trying to put on their show, they're trying to, you know, in- entertain their audience, and you're sitting there trying to get on their good side so they can rage you and all that stuff. But, um, yeah, it's tough. Growing on Twitch is, is extremely tough. So I, here in a year, I see myself uh, with a with a pretty big following on YouTube, me and my girlfriend, um, you know, she's a, she's a filmmaker. She's very talented, like seriously the best at what she does. And she's taught me a lot about video editing. And I mean, if you've, if, if you guys want to check out my YouTube channel, um, cozy night owls on YouTube, We've got a lot of videos up there. You guys can get a taste of how talented she is at editing videos. And um, I mean, I've got the talent. She's got the she's got the talent. We we can really go far if we put our minds to it. We just got to stop playing video games offline. (laughs) Little less, little less ESO, a little more video editing. That's right. I guess. Yeah, I see myself spreading my eggs into multiple baskets, not just solely focusing on streaming. Well, listen, we're really excited to see that. So we'll put um, we'll put that YouTube channel in the show notes. You'll obviously um, we'll obviously put Ludi's Twitch stream channel in the show notes. If people want to connect with you, reach out to you, learn more about you, where should they go? 
Uh, Discord's definitely the best place to get a hold of me. Uh, aside from that, there's Twitter DMs. Uh, <laughs> just hit me on Twitter. Um, but but I would definitely say that Discord is if you want to be a part of not just me but the community, jump in Discord. Um, I could even give you a link to my link tree that just breaks all my links down. You could just stick that in the bottom of the show notes. Mm. And that's what we'll do. That's what we'll definitely do. We'll put that link tree link in the show notes so that you can connect with Ludi. Go check out his stream on Twitch and watch it. And I know that you'll love it. Ludi, thanks so much for your time on the podcast today. Of course, it was fun. Thanks for listening to Going Live. My name is Mike Washburn. You can catch me Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays streaming live at twitch.tv slash Mr. Washburn. It would be amazing to see you in my stream. We can chat games, technology, and talk about the podcast and guests. Again, that's twitch.tv slash Mr. Washburn. I really hope to see you there. If you want to get in touch with me, check out the website at goinglivepodcast.com. You can connect with me on Twitter at Mr. Washburn or on Instagram at Mr. Washburn Twitch. I'd love to know who you think we should talk to next. If you're enjoying the show and think others would too, I'd be thrilled if you shared it with them. Please leave me a rating or review in Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts. When you leave a rating, it gives our rankings a boost and this helps others to discover the show. Thanks as always for listening. Stay awesome, and we'll see you soon.